Hello everyone and welcome to the start of our UE5 C++ tutorial series. Over the course of this series we will be introducing you to how to use C++ in Unreal Engine 5, how to make use of it and how to actually understand it for your own projects. In this first episode we're going to talk about how to create your new class and also expose variables over from the source uh, file in C++ over to your blueprint class in the editor. So let's get started. When starting a new project we're going to start off with this menu screen that you usually get here but we're going to choose uh, we'll go for the first person project and we're going to choose a C++ option here. Now you can do it start with blueprint and switch over to C++ afterwards you can totally do that um, but this would make the setup a bit easier I don't have to restart it or anything like that. So make this on we'll name it and we'll do uh, my C++ plus project and click create and that's going to create the project for us when a project opens up you'll see the usual editor but it should also open your default IDE and for most people this will be Visual Studio but you can use any IDE you want I personally use Visual Studio so to get started with our first C++ class you can go up to the top here the tools and here you'll see new C++ class if you're using Unreal 4, you will find it in the file instead. So in, in button UE5, go to Tools, New C++ Class. And this wizard is going to open up. It's going to ask you what you want the parent class to be. You can do an empty one completely, or based upon an actor, pawn, character, anything you want really, down here. Now, most of the time, your things are going to be actors, but it could also come from other things too. But it's up to you and what you decide to do. So let's do some basic setup here. Let's go and put an actor in next and we'll name it and call it one my test actor and we'll click create class and that's going to add the header file and source file for our uh, class here now these work slightly differently from the blueprint and typically the workflow is is that the c++ class is used to define the class and what they do and the blueprint that is made is used by the designer to customize and configure it to do the task they want it to but they can also extend it to do some extra functionality but typically that's where you find the uses going on here so here we have the generated files that you get from it this is the source file the .cpp and the test actor h file or header file uh, is here too um, uh, reload all there we go okay now the difference between the header file and the source file is the header file is sort of like the table of contents for a uh, class so this is where you'll define like the um, variables, the uh, functions, and so on and so forth. And the actual source file is where you define how they actually work and what they actually do. Um, you'll also notice when you first load it up, you'll get this window come up. This is the live window, uh, live coding window. And when you compile your game, this is what will come out with a success or fail um, and any errors you have to fix. Okay. So once it's finished doing that, you're good to go. So. Let's take a look at our code that we're getting here in our class. So in the header file, you're going to see the includes. And in the includes, we've got the core minimal, the game framework actor.h, and my test actor generator.h. Okay. Uh, obviously, my test actor is our one. Uh, the game framework is the actor.h because we inherited from an actor. So that's where that's coming from. And core minimal is just the generic stuff that all actors and all objects have inside their thing. It's the minimum they must have. And down here we've got the various uh, definitions we've got going on here. As I say, it's pretty basic because it's just an actor. But up here you've got the class. You can set up here with the constructor. Public, protected, and public again. So here they're doing uh, public, setting up the, uh, the default constructor uh, function, my, a, my test actor. Um, this is where you define your variables and functions uh, typically in here. Uh, but you may want to protect them in which case down here you've got virtual void begin play override and in public you've got tick so these are the functions that you're probably familiar with if you're doing blueprint they'll come in here by default for you as well um, so I won't go through every single thing you're seeing here like every single symbol um, go check out the primer series of videos it'll help explain a few things that you may not have access to okay so then we've got the cpp file going to that and here you can see we're including the header file. So that is now including everything that this is including. Um, and in here we've got the constructor here running. And it's just saying it can tick. 
And then we've got the uh, definition of the begin play, which is not really doing anything, and a tick, which is not really doing anything. Okay. Now, when these have got set up here with a super and super, this just means they're going to run their default stuff that they normally run as a begin play or delta time. Um, uh, so you can um, override or extend functionality, but that's all you really need. Okay, so how do we actually make it show information to our editor? Because the whole point of using C++ is you're trying to uh, put performance heavy stuff in C++ or stuff that you're going to be using regularly. You can to find your own custom classes in here and make it configurable in your um, editor. So let's go to the header file and talk about uh, properties. We want to show a property and make it uh, appear in your editor. So what we're going to do is in our public section here, I'm just going to uh, put in a few new lines and you define a property to show in the editor with the keywords you property. And in brackets, you'll put in edit anywhere. These are keywords. Oh, hello. Anywhere. These are keywords to help the engine identify what should be um, shown in the editor. Okay. We call that the reflection uh, system. I think it's, they call it reflection system. Um, but it looks for these sort of keywords and these uh, like visibility checks here to say what where these things will be found. So when you do edit anywhere, um, you can now define the, uh, the the variable itself. If you do it same line or new line, totally up to you. It doesn't really matter. But it's all one bit of code in its own. So here I'm going to do um, int32 and do value, like so. Okay, so I've defined in my header there is going to be a value, which is an integer 32-bit integer. Okay, and I can edit it anywhere. And what I want to do is now go into my CPP file. And I want it to um set the value uh in my constructor here for example so here we can do um a value equals uh 100 okay and when you're happy with that you can i've got it right haven't i value yep yeah okay. um and that's it really um and this will make it so that the uh the property here is edit editable anywhere so they can um make it appear in a certain section of the what you typically want to do otherwise it'll appear like a default blank section so you know how you have categories on the right hand side of your unreal actor class so if i make a new actor here or go into one of these ones um in your class defaults you've got these categories so transform animation mesh so forth. we can make our own ones of those um by putting in our header here a comma and then defining again keyword category equals and in quote marks the name of the category you want to do so we do test uh, values okay um okay yeah so let's do uh, take a look at that so once i finish with that i'm going to save all of it okay and then i'm going to go back to unreal and we do a hot reloading and that is handled by this little button down here which looks like a tetris block basically click this and it'll recompile the engine and hopefully it'll come out with green with no errors wait for it to finish doing its thing there you go successfully linked patch so then if i want to add the class now to my scene i can find all my classes by the way my c++ classes folder you can see my test actor is now there and if i want to create a child blueprint of this i'll just right click on it and you create blueprint class to based upon my test actor. Do that. Let's just place it somewhere. I'll put it in the root. And like that. So now I've got this blueprint version of it. And you can see here on the right hand side, test values has got its own section with value already set to 100. Okay. So now my editor can go through, a designer can go through and change its values based upon what they want to show made in game. Um, which is pretty neat. Now, if you don't want um, then to be able to change it, um, so if I just right click and hit and do value, you can see we can't actually change the value in the blueprint code. We can only change it in the details. So if you want to make it so you can find and change it on the flight during the runtime, 
then what you have to do is go into your um code here into the header and here we're going to add on the edit anywhere blueprint read write adding this extra keyword let's save it will mean that i can now access it inside the blueprint as well so let's go back and reload this one so let's just close that reload wait for it to do its thing and there we go so now if i go back to my class i made my test actor uh value is still there on the right hand side because of edit anywhere but now i should be able to access value as a variable okay so it only appears there if i have it set to blueprint read write in the visual studio okay Without that, it just means I can exit anywhere. If I don't put any anywhere uh, or any of this, it just means that this is only going to be used in the C++ side of the project. Okay, so you can't access it at all in the editor, which is important if you're doing like if you're a tools programmer and you want uh, to put some functionality, but you don't want the designer change certain aspects of it because it's, it's critical to the functioning of the class. You you can make them hidden like that. Um, also make them private variables if you want as well. Another keyword we can use as well is we can if we want to show it but we don't want to change it so we have edit anywhere but we're going to change that to blueprint read only and we'll make it visible so you can see it visible anywhere so not e not edit anywhere visible anywhere um and we're also going to make it transient Ooh, hello Okay, and then this category is the same. So all these keywords are working together to make something like this. So basically the transient uh, specifier, so read only, uh, let's go through it. So read only means that you can only uh, get the value, you can't set it. Uh, visible means you can only see it, you can't change it in the class defaults. Transient means that the um, it won't be saved or loaded from a disk. It is, uh, so it's, it's a, a non-persistent value, it's just there you don't have to store it anywhere or anything like that um and the category we know about is setting it to category there okay so then we're going to save all and then back into our project we'll hot reload recompile the engine and when that's done i can now take a look at the actor you can see here the value is now grayed out i can't change it okay that's because it is visible and read only so i can see it but i can't change it uh same goes for in blueprint here if i go to value go down i can only get the value i can't set it okay that's all right about there and there you go we've now got a variable showing from our custom class into our editor allowing game designers to take on what we're setting up and make the game we want to make in the next episode we're going to go through and showcase how to expose functions and events over in our from our c++ class into our editor blueprint class you can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash ryan laley where you find all my videos early from just one dollar a month i said thank you to all my patrons and youtube members for their continued support in the channel Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.